CBS Young and the Restless Spoilers Monday full episode September 16, 2024. Sharon Newman sat in a corner booth at Crimson Lights, her hands trembling slightly as she placed two cups of coffee on the table. To anyone watching, it seemed as though she was waiting for someone to join her. But the truth was far more unsettling. Cameron Kirsten, the man who had tormented her years ago, was sitting across from her in her mind. His smirk was maddening, his words biting. Sharon stared at him, her eyes narrowing as he spoke, though in reality, she was alone. You're weak, Sharon, Cameron's voice echoed in her head. You always have been. Sharon's face twisted in anger. That's not true. She hissed, her voice low but sharp. I'm stronger than you'll ever be. Cameron leaned back in his imaginary chair, his smile widening. Really? Then why are you still here, talking to me? I'm dead, Sharon. You know that. But you can't let me go, can you? You'll never be free of me. Sharon's fingers tightened around her coffee cup, her knuckles turning white. The room around her blurred as she became more immersed in the argument with the man who only existed in her fractured mind. Her voice grew louder, drawing the attention of other customers in the cafe. Shut up. You don't know anything about me. You don't get to control me anymore. The other patrons in the cafe exchanged uneasy glances as Sharon's outburst grew more intense. Ray Rosales, the police officer who had been her anchor, was gone, and without him, Sharon's grip on reality had begun to slip. Her mental illness was taking over, and the symptoms of her delusions were becoming more pronounced with each passing day. Suddenly, Sharon slammed her hands on the table, causing the cups to rattle and spill coffee across the surface. She pointed an accusatory finger at the empty seat across from her. You're the one who's weak. You couldn't break me then, and you won't now. The cafe had fallen silent, all eyes on Sharon as she continued her one-sided argument. Several people pulled out their phones, recording the disturbing scene unfolding before them. In her mind, Cameron leaned forward, his face twisted in a cruel smile. Look around, Sharon. They all think you're crazy. And maybe they're right. Sharon's breathing quickened, her heart pounding in her chest. She felt trapped, unable to escape the nightmare that was unfolding inside her own mind. She was vaguely aware of the stares, the whispers, but in this moment, all she could focus on was the confrontation with the ghost of her past. Meanwhile, the video of Sharon's outburst would soon spread across town, fueling rumors and concern about her mental state. But as she struggled with her inner demons, another storyline was quietly playing out, one that involved her son, Connor Newman. Connor, despite being young, had a sharp mind and a deep understanding of the complex relationships that surrounded him. He knew that his parents, Chelsea Lawson and Adam Newman, had once been deeply in love. That love, while fractured, hadn't completely disappeared. Connor could see it in the way they looked at each other, in the rare moments they shared that weren't clouded by bitterness or unresolved issues. He knew his father had feelings for Sally Spectra, but something inside Connor told him that his parents still belonged together. For months, Connor had been quietly observing, piecing together the puzzle of their relationship. He saw the tension between his father and Sally, the way they seemed to be drifting apart. And he saw his mother, Chelsea, struggling to find happiness on her own. Connor had a plan, a way to bring his parents back together, to restore the family unit he desperately craved. But even he knew it wouldn't be easy. Chelsea and Adam had grown apart in ways that went beyond simple disagreements. Their differences were fundamental. Adam, always the dark and brooding figure, was consumed by his ambitions and complicated feelings for Sally. Chelsea, on the other hand, had been through her own emotional roller coaster, her recovery from a mental breakdown, her strained relationships, and her journey to rebuild her life. The only thing that kept them connected was their shared love for Connor. But Connor was determined. He saw the bond that still existed between them, even if they refused to acknowledge it. His plan was simple, but risky, he would create opportunities for his parents to spend more time together. Family dinners, casual outings, anything to remind them of the connection they once had. He believed that if they just spent enough time together, the old feelings would resurface. However, even Connor knew there was a chance his plan could fail. He had heard the arguments, the way his parents talked about each other when they thought he wasn't listening. There was too much history, too many wounds that hadn't fully healed. But he had to try. 
Chatham, the combination of his parents' names that he had heard whispered among their old friends, was a legacy he wanted to preserve. As Connor worked behind the scenes to set his plan in motion, Chelsea and Adam were growing increasingly aware of the delicate situation. Chelsea had noticed the subtle ways Connor tried to push them together, and though it warmed her heart, she knew it wasn't that simple. She and Adam had shared something deep, something that would always connect them. But life had changed. They had changed. One evening, after yet another awkward family dinner, Chelsea turned to Adam as Connor went to his room. He's trying to put us back together, you know, she said, her voice soft but serious. Adam looked at her, a hint of sadness in his eyes. I know. He thinks it'll fix everything. Chelsea sighed, running a hand through her hair. I wish it were that simple. But we both know it's not. We're different people now, Adam. The only thing we really agree on is what's best for Connor. Adam nodded, though he couldn't deny the small part of him that wondered if maybe Connor was onto something. There had been a time when he and Chelsea had been happy, when they had built something that felt solid and real. But that time had passed, and now all that was left was the love they shared for their son. I don't want him to get hurt, Chelsea continued, her voice heavy with emotion. He's trying so hard, but we both know this probably won't work. We need to be honest with him. Adam frowned, conflicted. He's growing up, Chelsea. He's starting to understand that life doesn't always go the way you want it to. But maybe, maybe we give him this one shot. Chelsea looked at him, surprised. You really think we should give this a try? Adam hesitated. He wasn't sure what he believed anymore. His feelings for Sally were real, but so was the history he shared with Chelsea. Could they find a way back to each other, for Connor's sake? Or was it too late? The next morning, Connor sat down at the kitchen table, his heart racing with anticipation. He had overheard bits of his parents' conversation the night before, and he felt a flicker of hope. Maybe his plan was working after all. Maybe, just maybe, his family could be whole again. But even Connor knew that love was complicated. Would his plan succeed, or would the differences between his parents be too great to overcome? Only time would tell. Diane, always the pragmatist, voiced her concerns one evening after Kyle had left. Jack, we need to be careful, she said, her voice low and urgent. If Kyle finds out we've been lying to him, it'll ruin everything. We need to make sure no one else knows. Jack nodded, though the weight of his decision was beginning to bear down on him. I know, Diane. But we're almost there. Kyle's already spending more time at Jabot than at Glissade. Once he's fully transitioned, we'll tell him the truth. We'll say there was a mistake in the diagnosis, or that the doctors found a treatment that worked. He'll understand. Diane wasn't so sure. You're underestimating Kyle's temper. He's not going to take this lightly, Jack. We need to be prepared for the worst. The worst-case scenario was one Jack tried not to think about. He couldn't afford to lose Kyle, not now, not after everything they had been through. But Diane was right. Kyle's love for his father was strong, but so was his sense of betrayal. If Kyle felt manipulated, there would be no going back. For now, though, the plan was working. Kyle was slowly being pulled back into Jabot, and Jack was carefully laying the groundwork for his son to take over. But the clock was ticking, and Jack knew that the longer they kept up the lie, the more dangerous the game became. And Victor? He watched from the sidelines, waiting for the inevitable fallout. He knew Jack's plan would crumble eventually. All it would take was one slip, one moment of weakness, and Kyle would uncover the truth. And when that happened, Victor would be there to pick up the pieces, ready to use Kyle's anger and betrayal to his own advantage. Jack thought he had everything under control. But in Genoa City, secrets rarely stayed hidden for long.